Okay, welcome. This is our Chodesh Shvat for bringing. And we always start with some, some singing. So about 30 years ago, I arranged a number of Fabrengans between Rav Ginsberg and Rav Shlomo Karlbach here at the Moshav. And the first one took place uh, shortly after Tisha B'Av and shortly after um, uh, Shabbat Nachamu. And Rav Ginsberg made up a nigan on the way to the Fabrengan, and he sang it at the Fabrengan. And maybe three or four years ago, he uh, he recorded it. Uh, uh, Rabbi Shlomo Katz sang this song, Nachamu Nachamu. And at the end of this uh, album, there's about 10, min- 10 seconds of silence, and then it played the original recording from the Fabrengen singing this song. So I I was thinking of it because the world has gone through so much these last uh, 10 months. And here in Israel, we're in lockdown number three. And we need a lot of consolation. So this is Nachamu Nachamu. Nachamu, 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 Ami, Nachamu, Ami, Yomar Elokeichem, Nachamu, 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 Ami, Nachamu Ami, Yom Aralokechem. Dabru, Dabru, Elev Yerushalayim. Dabru, Dabru, Elev Yerushalayim. Nachamu, 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 Ami, Nachamu, Ami, Yom Aralokechem, Nachamu, 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 Ami, Nachamu Ami, Yom Aralokechem. Dabru, Dabru, Alev Yerushalam of Avayim. Dabru, Dabru, Alev Yerushalayim. So we should feel God's compassion and consolation. The world needs a lot of consolation. Anyways, what would a good for bring and be without a l'chaim? So my wife always insists that I have to make a l'chaim. So I'm making a l'chaim. We're almost at Chodesh Shvat. That's what we're going to be learning about tonight. Baruch Atah That was strong. <laughs> okay, tonight we're going to be learning uh, the different uh, associations with the month of Shvat. There are many, many associations. We're going to concentrate on four. The letter of the month, the uh, astrological sign of the month, the chush, the sense of the month, and the tribe of the month. 
The first three are mentioned in the Sefer Yitzira. That's where we get this idea that each month has all these associations. And later, it was also connected to each of the tribes. These are 12 months and the 12 tribes. So we'll start with the letter of the month. The letter of the month is Sadi. And the Arizal actually called this letter Sadiq. Not just Sadi, but Sadiq. Because the whole association with this letter is of the Sadiq. And the Bnei Yisachar, who wrote extensively uh, uh, about uh, each of the months, so he says an amazing thing, even though it says in the Gemara, Ein Mazali Yisrael, there's no astrological Abraham, wait, wait, we don't hear you. Now. You didn't hear me from the beginning? No, no, we hear you begin by one second, but no more. If you want, you can you can speak after the Nachamu Nachamu. Okay, okay. Technical blemish here. <laughs> we'll start again. We're going to be learning about Chodesh uh, Shvat. We're going to look at the letter of the month. This is from Sefer Yitzira the astrological sign of Shvat, the chush, the sense of the month, and later uh, it was added uh, an association with one of the 12 tribes. So we'll start with the letter of the month, is it Sadi? And the Arizal called it Sadiq. He called the letter not just Sadi, but Sadiq. And the Bnei Yisachar, who wrote extensively about the months and amazing connections to Bnei Yisachar, amazing connections. So he says that even though we have this concept, Ein Mazal Yisrael, there's no uh, set uh, astrological rulership over Israel. He said, nonetheless, of all the months of the year, the one that most is connected to the Jewish people is the month of Shvat, which in, in, in English, in astrology, it's Aquarius, the age of Aquarius, the uh, Messianic era. And he said that this, this is the, the most uh, appropriate of all of the mazalot for uh, the people of Israel. And of course, we have this concept, Amech Kulam Sadikim. All of your people are Sadikim. So this month is not just talking about the Sadik, but it's talking about the Sadik in each and every person. So the Sadik of this month is Moshe Rabbeinu. Why do we say that? Because if you look in, in Rashi, there is a tradition in, that he brings that the entire book of uh, uh, Dvarim, Mishneh Torah, was begun on Rosh Chodesh Shvat and took 37 days. According to tradition, Moshe Rabbeinu passes away in Zion Adar. And so the whole book of Devarim took 37 days to give over. 37 is the gematri of Halev, the heart. So we have this idea that words that come from the heart enter the heart. It's a very, very important idea that we should all learn very well. When our words come from our heart, they will enter into other people's hearts. So the whole book of Devarim is begun on Rosh Chodesh Shvat. So really, Moshe is the Sadiq of, of this month. And there's a Pasuk that says, Pre Tzadik, Eitz Chaim. The fruit of the Tzadik is the tree of life. So this makes a very strong connection between 
a tzaddik, and of course the tzaddik in each and every one of us, and the tree of life. Now, everyone knows that the month of Shvat is the month of the new year of the trees, Rosh Hashanah Le'ilan, and Tu B'Shvat. So the whole month of Shvat has to do with the new year of the trees. Of course, Beit Shammai held that the new year of the trees was actually on Rosh Chodesh Shvat, and Hillel says it was on Tu B'Shvat. Hopefully we'll have time to get to that to get to that later. So, in short, we see that, first of all, the word eitz for tree has a tzadi in it, an ayin and a tzadi. And there are three different ideas that are connected to trees. First of all, the Eitz Chaim in, in, in the Garden of Eden. This is the symbol of everything good, of everything, of the, the utopian reality of the Garden of Eden, and the utopian reality of the uh, Mashiach, of the Messianic age that we should all merit to experience. And this is all the symbol of Eitz Chaim. When Bnei Yisrael crossed the sea and then they went three days without water, and then they got to a place called Mara, and the waters were bitter. So God says, take a tree and throw it in the water and sweeten the waters. And so symbolically, the tree was the tree of life. That is what has the power to sweeten the bitter waters. So the word eight equals 160, equals selim, image. So this is the very, very important concept that we as human beings are created, but selim elokim, in the image of God. But we see that the image of God is re it relates very much to the tree of life. And of course, every time we put the Torah away, we say, Eitz Chaim Hi, Lamacha Ziki Ba. The Torah itself is called an Eitz Chaim. So here we see that a human being is called a, is called a tree because we have the Pasuk in Sefer Devarim, that Adam eats a sada. A human being is like a, uh, a tree. And then the Torah is compared to a tree. And what else is compared to a tree? The Svirot. The Svirot are actually called Eitz Chaim. That's the name of the, the teachings of the Ariza. It begins with the Eitz Chaim. But the sphero, the form of the sphero, and the form of the body, we have a trunk, and then we have branches, and we, we are like a tree, and just like the sphero are like a tree. And all of this is in the image of God. Now, of course, we don't say that God is a tree. That's not what we're saying. But there is the, the, the idea of a tree combines the image of God, the tree of life, that a, a person is called a tree, the svirot are called a tree, and the Torah is called a tree. So this is what it means in, in the Zohar, where it says that God, the Torah, and Israel are all one. And that which connects us is this symbol an image of a tree. Again, the word image begins with tzadi. That is the letter of this month. So we went through that quickly, but there are lots of really good ideas for contemplation here, especially when we put together the Torah, a, a human being, the Sfirot, and the tree of life in the Garden of Eden.
Now, let's go to the astrological sign of the month. We call it, it's Aquarius. And the symbol of Aquarius is the water carrier. In Hebrew, it's Deli, a, literally a pail in modern Hebrew, a Deli, but it means a vessel that is holding water. So we know if we're continuing, because the amazing thing every month that all of the symbols, the letter of the month, the sense of the month, the tribe of the month, the astrological sign, which element it is, fire, earth, air, and water, the, the, the permutation of God's name, um, all of these things go together. And that is how we, we pick up on the special energy of every month, is through understanding these symbols. So we say, Ein Torah, Ein Mayim Ela Torah. There's no water other than the Torah. That the, the concept of water is connected with Torah. That's why Yeshiau says, call Sameh Halech Lemayim. Everyone who is thirsty, let them go to the water. What, what are we thirsty for? We're thirsty to be close to God. And how do we get close to God? through the Torah. So all who are thirsty, let them go to the water. And so this month is the water carrier, is the vessel holding the water. And this is very connected to the whole idea of Mishnah Torah. Mishnah Torah, in a sense, is the, the uh, review of the whole Torah, the, um, the, the, summation, the culmination of the whole Torah is the Mishnah Torah. We'll see in, in a minute that the letters of Mishnah are the same as Hashemen or Shemna, oil. We're going to see very soon the connection of olive oil to this month. So this idea, if you take the letters of the name of this month, Dali, and you read them backwards, so it's yeled, yalid, to give birth to, or yeled, a child. But the verb is to give birth to. And so the idea is that the, the vessel for the water of this month is, in a sense, we are the vessel. We have to make a vessel for the water of the Torah, and the highest level of Torah is when we come up with new chidushim, new ideas, new revelations, new perspectives of the Torah. So Dali and Yaled are the same, the same letters. And this is considered in, in Hasidut the secret of the whole test that Eliezer gave when he was looking for a wife for Yitzchak. And where did he go? He came to the well, and he said, whoever will draw water for me and for the camels, that is the proper wife for Rivka. He set up a, like a sign. But we're told that, that this is uh, uh, symbolic of his looking for the proper wife for Yitzchak was the one who could draw water. And of course, where did Yaakov meet Rachel? At the well. And where did Moshe meet Zipporah? At the well. And as we said, Moshe is the really the Sadiq of this month. And his name, Moshe, which we learned last week, is Mina Mayim Mishitihu. From the water, he was drawn out. That the soul of Moshe was so connected to the Torah that his name comes from. From the water, he was drawn out. He came into this world in order to 
make the vessel for the Torah that would be given at Har Sinai. Now let's go to the sense of the month. The sense of the month is eating and or taste. And we have a pasuk, Sadiq Ochel Lesova Nafsho. A Sadiq eats for the satisfaction of his soul. Now, depending on the translation in English, you might get soul or you might get body. The continuation of that same verse is, but a glutton eats and is never satisfied. So in other words, it's in a simple meaning, it means that Sadiq eats just what the body needs and he's satisfied. And a glutton can eat all day long and will never be satisfied. So this is one meaning that's connected to the uh, sense of the month. But on a deeper level, it's a, in, in Hasidut, so much is explained about the tikkun of eating. And like the whole thing of, of, of the Rebbe's tish and three meals on Shabbat, where everything's happening around the food. You know, we make a lot of jokes about it, <laughs> but it's true that this idea is we can eat for our bodies, but we can also eat for our souls. Sadiq ochel l'sova nafsho. And this is, like I said, a big thing in Hasidut, and that's why on Shabbat, it's such a big thing that uh, every once in a while, some people, like every few bites, say, Lekavid Shabbos Kodesh, for the honor of the holy Shabbos. And this lifts up the eating. Now we have to mention the obvious that the whole sin in the Garden of Eden, Eden came through eating. Eating from the Eitzadat Tovara was through eating. And so, so much is explained in Kabbalah and Hasidut, the opportunity we have through our eating to fix this original sin. Because eating means much more than just eating food. Eating means taking something from the outside into us and integrating it. So in a sense, let's say we could learn Torah and it could go in one ear and out the other ear. If we don't integrate it, if we don't contemplate it, if we don't make it part of ourselves. So eating is not, is not just food. It's the whole action of taking from outside of ourselves, bringing it in, and then integrating it and drawing out the holy sparks in order to give us life force. So this is a whole deep, deep concept, but it's, it is the sense of this month. We eat, <laughs> how many times a day do we eat? It's not just the month of Shvat. But this month, especially because of, of Tu B'Shvat and the idea of eating fruit, and especially the fruits of Eretz Yisrael, so much is concentrated on uh, being able to uplift the whole concept of eating. So now let's go to the tribe of the month. Now, this is, the Zohar gives one set of associations, and the Arizal gave another set of associations. Each one is true in its own context. According to the Arizal, the tribe that's associated with the month of Shvat is Asher. And in the Torah, Yaakov, gives his 12 sons a blessing. 
and Moshe did. So I want to read for you the blessings of Yaakov and Moshe. And, and we'll see that some of the blessings are very similar and others are, are somewhat different. But for Asher, so Yaakov's blessing was, May Asher Shmeina Lachmo, Uhu Yiten Ma'adane Melech. So his blessing was that from Asher comes the, the oil of his bread, the fatness, the, the plenty of his bread, and he will give delicacies to the king. So this is very connected to what we just said, is that what does it mean to give delicacies to the king? So first of all, the tribe of Asher is what we call the, the, the Galil, the Galilee. And from ancient times till today, the Galilee is full of olive trees. And of course, what comes from olive trees is Shemen, Shemen Zayit. So that was a prophetic uh, blessing from Yaakov because the, 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 the inheritances of the land had not been given over yet. But Yaakov in prophecy saw that Asher would end up in the Galil. And like I said, for thousands of years, anyone who knows the Galil, it's full of olive trees. Some of them very ancient, very ancient, up to 2000 years old. Now let's hear the bracha that Moshe gave. Ula Asher Amar Baruch mi Banim Asher Yirot Sui Achav Vitovel Beshemen Raglo. So to Asher it is said, Blessed from all of the sons is Asher. He will be like super accepted and uh, beloved by his brothers, he will dip his feet in oil. So we see that both blessings from both Yaakov and Moshe connect Asher with the idea of eating. He will give he'll give delicacies to the king, and they both mention olive oil. So, We'll start with a few connections, and then I want to give over a few ideas from Rob Ginsburg. So first of all, if you look at the word ma'adane, the delicacies of the king. So we see in it the word Aden. The idea of delicacies comes from Aden, Gan Aden. Because like on Shabbos, Oneg Shabbos through the food is reconnecting us to the Garden of Eden and is connecting us to the opportunity to fix the eating of the eights hadat tov vara. So if you look in the word Aden, so the first two letters, ayin and dalad, if you switch them around, is da, eights hadat tov vara. That was what was in, along with the tree of life, in the middle of the garden was also the eight Sadat Tovara. And according to the Zohar, these two trees shared the same root system. They were, in a sense, mirror images of each other. And that's why we're taught that had they waited until Shabbos, they could have eaten from the eight Zadat Tovara and from the eight Chaim. And we're still, that's what we're waiting for. We're still waiting to eat from the eight Chaim, but we have to fix eating from the eight Zadat Tovara. So in the word Aden is the word Da, is, is, is that fixing. So we're going to jump now. Well, actually, I want, to, I want to add one other thing. The idea of Gan Eden. So this is a Torah from Rob Ginsburg, that the root Gan appears on three different levels here. 
Gan means garden. So this world, which is full of trees and beautiful nature, is the level of Gan and the level of this world. The same root is Gavan. Gavan means a, a, a wide spectrum of color, a gav, Gavanim. So, really, when you get to the Olam Yitzira, then we can see the full Gavan of this world. What we, what we see with our eyes is just the superficial outside. But inside, all of the physical world is a world of energy. That's what matter is. All of matter is energy. And there's a, this wide spectrum. And then, the same, this is very important to understand, this next idea is, it's the same root as nigun, a song. Gan and nigun are very, very connected. So when we hear a nigun that moves our neshama, in a sense, it's bringing us back to Gan Eden. It's a very, very deep connection between nigun and Gan. And this is very connected to Tu Bishvat. Because the whole thing on Tu Bishvat is to praise the fruits of Eretz Yisrael and all of Eretz Yisrael. And we know the, the, the beauty of Perak Shira, where every creation has a song. So this is a very, very big part of Tu Bishvat, is this appreciation of how the whole creation is singing, is a nigun. Okay, so now a very, very interesting idea of where the name Asher is found. So last week at the burning bush, God reveals, for those who were here for the Parsha Shir last week, we talked about the name Ekia Asher Ekia. I will be that I will be. And this name is only revealed one time and is really, will truly only be revealed in the, in the Messianic era. So Rav Ginsburg points out that this name, Ekia Asher Ekia, has 11 letters. This is connected to the, the month of Shvat, which is the 11th month of the year. So at first glance, you'd say, ah, oh, I don't really understand that connection. But look at the word in the middle. Ekia Asher, Ekia, the name of the tribe of the month, is Asher. And what does Asher mean? Osher means richness. Ashrei, Ashrei Yoshrei Beitecha, happy are the ones that dwell in your house. So Asher, Ashrei, is this feeling of of abundance, of joy, of richness. So that's the blessing that Yaakov gives, that, that Asher will, will feed delicacies to the king. And this is such a positive image. So that's one connection. Then Rob Ginsburg explains deeper that the name Ekia, I will be, is always connected with tshuva. Why? Is because when we do tshuva, and again, we're not talking about just tshuva of things we did wrong or missed the mark or mistakes. We're talking about tshuva on all the levels, but most importantly on the level of just returning, returning to God, returning to the source of our soul, and returning to I will be to our potential. So really, tshuva is about becoming everything that we can become. That's the greatest tshuva in the world. We're returning 
and activating and fulfilling our potential. So that's the first ekia. But it says ekia asher ekia. So again, the asher is 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 praise, is joy, is is richness. So this is what Rabbi Nachman calls doing tshuva on your tshuva. This is a big concept in Rabbi Nachman and in Hasidut in general. This idea of tshuva is an ongoing process. It, it, it never ends, no matter how close we come to God or how close we come to other people or our potential, we can always come closer. So eki asher ekia is this idea of coming closer and closer and closer. So ah, so it's brought down Akia is Gematria twenty one. But in this name, Eki appears twice. So it's given over in Kabbalah and Hasidut that this name is also the name of truth. Why? Because when you multiply Ekia times Ekia equals 441, 21 squared equals 441 equals Emet equals truth. So here we're learning what is a person's truth? A person's truth is I will be, is becoming what we're supposed to be. That is our truth. And this next idea is, 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 is so important because this name again appears twice. Ekia asher ekia. So there is what's called Teva Rishon and Teva Sheni. Our first nature, Teva Rishon and Teva Sheni, and our second nature. Our first nature is what we call nature and nurture. Those factors, whether it's DNA or how we're raised or the peer experiences that we have, or the, the, the society's uh, influence on us, our ingrained tendencies, nature and nurture. So that's a very, very, very important thing. But Hasidu teaches that we have to take our first nature and clarify it, purify it, direct it, fulfill it, bring it to a higher level. Because if we just are a product of our nature and nurture, well, what kind of spiritual work are we doing? Where are the tikkunim? Where's tikkun amidot? So that's called teva sheni. Our second nature is what we do with our first nature. So it's, it's connected to what we'll say that each person is like dealt a hand of cards. You get, you get the cards you were dealt. Ah, but what you do with those cards, that's Tevasheni. Teva so I'm saying all of this because the Gematria, this is the Torah from Mount Ginsburg, the Torah of Tevasheni equals emet. That is the true uh, who we are. And of course, it's based on Teva Rishon, but it only becomes our truth when we work with it. When we hit um, kafia, in the words of Chabad, when we, when we learn to subjugate and direct and do the proper clarifications and birur, then we can come to what's called teva sheni. Okay, we have just four more minutes here. So I just want to give over one other idea, a, a beautiful idea. Rob Ginsburg says 
There are four Rosh Hashanahs in the year. This is in uh, Masechet Rosh Hashanah, the first Mishnah. Rosh Hashanah of the years, Rosh Hashanah. Uh, Rosh Chodesh Nisan. Um, uh, Tu B'Shvat is the, is, the, is the new year of the trees. And uh, Rosh Chodesh Elul, uh, or some hold Tishrei in the Mishnah, um, the new year of tithing cattle. So Rav Ginsburg says that, that Tu B'Shvat, the whole month of Shvat, is also a new year. And what do we call Rosh Hashanah? Yom HaZikaron, the day of remembrance. So Rav Ginsburg says that on, on Tu B'Shvat, on the month of Shvat, there is an opening to remember our most primordial uh, antecedents in the Garden of Eden, and even before. So it's brought down that, the, that when a student came to the Baal Shem Tov, the first thing he said to them was, what do you remember? What do you remember? And the Magi did this also. In, in order to like, a little bit like shock a person into delving deep into their subconscious, their supraconscious, to find the, the, the primordial source of their soul. So Rabbi Nachman in The Seven Beggars tells these incredible stories. And one of the stories is, the first story actually, uh, uh, the first beggar, is a group of, of men got together and they wanted to see who could remember the, the, the farthest back. And so they started with the oldest one. And he said, I remember when they plucked the apple from the tree. And they were all amazed. Wow. Again, this is all very symbolic. What an ancient memory that was. Then the next one, who was a little bit younger, said that he remembered when the fruit first began to form, even before it was picked. The next one said he remembers when they brought the seed to plant the fruit. You notice here, these are all trees and fruit that we're talking about. And the next one remembers when they found the seed before they brought it. And then the next one, each one's getting younger and younger, but remembering farther and farther back. The next one remembers the taste of the fruit before it entered the fruit. And then the next one remembered the smell of the fruit before it came into the fruit. And then one more remembered the form of the fruit before it be penetrated the fruit. So this is going all the ways back. Again, very, very symbolic. The Garden of Eden, it's Achayim, the whole thing. And then the youngest one of them says, I remember all of this, and I remember nothing at all. And they all went, whoa. <laughs> that... That is the most ancient. He's like the oldest of all of us, but he's the youngest. It's an amazing, an amazing story. So Rob Ginsburg was just saying that there's something about this month that connects us. It's like a Yom Zikaron. And I have to mention, and we have like one minute left. I think most people know the, 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 the idea that if you eat olives, the, the Talmud says it makes you forget. But if you put olive oil on the olives, it, it makes you remember. So there's something about, remember, in both blessings from Yaakov and Moshe, for Asher, the tribe of the month of Shvat, is this idea of the oil, of the Shemen. And there's something about the Shemen that makes us remember. And this is connected and with this, we'll end, and then we'll have a bracha. This is the idea of taking your Teva Rishon, 
Because if you don't do anything with your Teva Rishon, and you just go status quo, it's like forgetting. It's like you, 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 don't, you don't get deeper. But if you go with your Teva Shani, this is like remembering of being able to take your first nature and to make it into your second nature. So thank you everyone very much for coming. Um, I see you're ready for your next class. Miriam is there smiling, waiting for me to finish. So I'll end with a bracha. And the bracha is that we should all connect to the, the deepest depths of our soul. That's the story from Rabbi Nachman, like remembering who we are and where we came from. And this, of course, is the, the, the foundational teaching of the Baal Shem Tov and the Alter Rabbi, that the, the soul is a chalak eloka in ma'al mamash, an actual part of God. And that's what we want to remember on Tu Bishvat especially. There's so many tikkunim to be made on Tu Bishvat. We should all enjoy the fruits of this month. And we should all make the tikkunim that we need to do. Thank you all very much. Thank you.